Hello, you beautiful people out there. Welcome back to Tense of It. In today's video, we're taking on something new and I'll guide you through it step by step so you can follow along easily. If you want to design a clamp in Fusion 360 that actually works after printing, not just looks good on screen, this three-part series is for you. We're starting from a blank sketch and by the end of all three parts, you'll have a fully working roller clamp with a hinge that opens, closes and prints smoothly without welding itself shut. As I sketch, I'll explain why I choose each dimension instead of just throwing numbers. Understanding this mindset is what separates a real designer from someone just clicking tools. Stay till the end of this part, because I'll show you how to lock your sketch so it never breaks later when we add the hinge. Every small step counts, so don't skip and watch till the end. So let's take a look at what we'll be creating today. I'll remove the joints for a moment so we can separate the parts clearly. As you can see, this design consists of three sections. The top part, the bottom part and the hinge. The hinge is what connects the top and bottom pieces and allows them to move. Let me switch back to the assembled view. Now I can open and close it. If I zoom into this area near the holes, you'll notice there are threads inside. These threads are meant for tightening the clamp using a nut and bolt. I won't be modeling the nut and bolt in this tutorial, but if you want that as a separate video, let me know in the comments. Now let me rotate the view a bit so you can clearly see these small gaps. These are the clearance spaces. This clearance is what allows the parts to move freely and smoothly after 3D printing. We'll find the best clearance value later in the tutorial. So without any delay, let's start learning. Let's start by creating a new file. I'll name this file Day3. Now I'm going to create a sketch by clicking on Create Sketch. I want the clamp to stand upright facing forward, so I'll select the Exit plane. If we look at the clamp I already modeled, the first step is to sketch the entire body. So let's begin by drawing a circle with a diameter of 85mm. As you can see, the units are currently set to inches, not millimeters. Let's go to document settings and switch the units to millimeters. Now, again, I'll draw a circle with a diameter of 80. This 85 mm represents the diameter of the roller the clamp will hold. Later, I'll show you how to increase this slightly so the clamp fits properly after printing. Next, let's give it some thickness. By creating another circle from the same center as the first one. I'm not directly entering a dimension for this outer circle because I want it to be 40 millimeters offset from the inner circle. There are multiple ways to apply an offset, but I'll show you using the dimension tool. With the tool active, select the outer circle and then the inner circle and set the distance to 40 millimeters. Now, this might not work the same way for you, and here's why. You might be measuring from the center point instead of edge to edge. To fix that, select the dimension tool again. Click on the outer circle, then right click and choose Pick Circle Arc Tangent. Then click the edge of the inner circle. Now you can apply the correct 40mm offset. I'm going to continue the sketch by creating a construction line along the x-axis. I'll grab the line tool 
click on the origin and drag it straight toward the edge of the outer circle. Once that line is placed, I press escape to exit the line tool so I don't keep drawing by accident. Now I select the line and change its type to construction so it will only act as a guide. If you want to switch a normal line into a construction line faster, pressing the X key does it instantly. Having this construction line right on the X axis is important because I'm going to use it as a mirror reference for the rest of the geometry. With that done, I'll move on to shaping the hinge area of the clamp, starting by adding the two circles. I'll start by drawing a circle from the point where the construction line meets the outer circle, and I'll end it where that same line meets the inner circle. I accidentally snapped to the midpoint earlier, so I'm redrawing it properly. From that same outer intersection point, I now create another circle with a diameter of 40mm to define the outer hinge region clearly. I make sure this 40mm circle starts exactly from that intersection point, so the hinge stays centered. Precise snapping matters here because slight misalignment can cause problems later when the hinge rotates. Once both circles are in place and correctly referenced off the construction line, I'm ready to move on to shaping the clamp's front profile. I'll now focus on the front section of the clamp. I grab the line tool and start sketching a pointed shape that looks like the beak of a bird. After placing the lines, I notice that the bottom line isn't perfectly horizontal. To fix that, I apply the horizontal and vertical constraint by clicking on the beak's anchor point and then selecting the center point. I click the wrong constraint tool the first time, so I'm doing it again properly. Now the line snaps perfectly to the x-axis and that gives me a clean base. To ensure that the clamp can still fit if the roller it will hold is slightly bigger, I'll move the bottom line slightly upward to create a small clearance gap before continuing with the rest of the geometry. This time, I'm not extending the line all the way to the inner circle because that extra portion isn't required for the clamp shape. I just need enough length to form the contact area. With the offset created and the gap established, I'll go ahead and mirror this beak shape to the other side using the construction line as my symmetry axis. I select all the lines that make up the beak, activate the mirror tool, and click the construction line as my mirror axis. That instantly mirrors the shape to the opposite side, keeping everything symmetrical. With both sides now in place, I grab the dimension tool so I can control the gap precisely between the two beak shapes. I take the two inner edges of the beak shape and apply a dimension of 10 mm. That defines a consistent spacing, which allows clearance for movement when the clamp closes around the roller. The moment that dimension locks in, both sides adjust evenly, and that gives me a controlled and properly balanced opening width. Now I need to make sure the sideline and the circle stay connected smoothly. So I activate the tangent tool, I click on the circle and then the line to apply the tangent constraint. Right away, Fusion mirrors that same tangent to the other side automatically, keeping both halves clean and consistent without needing extra adjustments. I zoom in and extend both lines until they touch the edge of the inner circle. I make sure they snap exactly at the boundary and don't stop slightly short or cross past it. Ok, 
clean contact points are important because any gap or overlap here can break the profile when I extrude the 3D body later. With that done, the outline is almost complete. Now I'm going to create the angle cut that separates the hinge area. I draw a line starting from the origin and aim it toward the outer circle. I set the angle to exactly 45 degrees so it creates a clean diagonal edge. Once the angle is confirmed, I place the line and prepare it to be mirrored. To mirror that angle line I selected, open the mirror tool again and then tick the construction line on the x-axis as the mirror reference. Fusion instantly creates the opposite angle line giving me a perfectly symmetrical hinge cut. With both angles in place, the hinge layout is clearly defined and ready for trimming if needed. At this point, the entire sketch is structured and fully constrained. Every line, circle and angle is locked into place and nothing is floating or undefined. This completes the first phase of the design. I now have a clean and stable sketch that can be safely used for extrusion and hinge creation in the next part of the tutorial. In part 2, I'm going to turn the sketch into a 3D body and create the top and bottom clamp sections. These parts will connect through the hinge area we just defined. As long as the base sketch is accurate and every constraint is applied correctly, the modeling process from here will be smooth and controlled without unexpected errors. I'll also show how to return to this sketch later if any adjustments are needed. Keeping a controlled base sketch makes it easy to update dimensions or clearances without breaking the model. So let's jump straight into part 2 while everything is still fresh and continue turning this 2D layout into a working clamp design. Thank you for watching this video. If you like my explanation, please hit like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Your support will help me grow my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon for staying updated.